Hey guys, welcome back to another Swords and Magic and Stuff devlog. If this is your first time here, welcome. I'm Michael Kosha, I'm the owner of Kindred Games and the lead developer of the game. Last month, we released a huge balance patch for the game, which completely redid all the weapon stats in the game, the progression curve, the XP gain, and more. With that patch, we introduced a new NPC named Kelch who teaches you how combat works and how levels and experience are gained and how they affect your character. This month, I've been working mostly on Kickstarter backer statues. These are statues earned by our legendary backer tiers, based on the fantastic portraits done by Kitsune. The statues will be placed in the Grove of Heroes, near Sleepy Haven here in the Farmlands, and you'll be able to visit the area as soon as the Farmlands update launches. One of our backers didn't want to contribute to the statues or portraits, and says that they just wanted to support the game. So instead of making them a statue, I decided to incorporate that into the lore of the Grove. So this hero didn't want the recognition of a statue to honor him and his deeds, and in response to the statue, they supposedly destroyed it. Maybe later on, I'll add a quest about discovering why or who actually destroyed the statue. Who knows? So in between working on the statues, I've also been working on some level design for an area called the Astral Ruins. This is a pretty magical area that can only be reached through a special portal. I won't spoil how to open the portal, but I will say that this area here is home to a famous astronomer named Bernard. He's been studying the ruins and has some theories about how to actually open them and find out what's inside. The question is, when are this world's secrets better left unfound? Now when I'm not working in this area, I've been spending my time jumping back and forth between working on bug reports. Most of the stuff in the bug reports I can fix myself, but some things I have to wait for mods to get to. I started off by fixing a bunch of random sound effects that just weren't set to the right sound class. Piece of cake. So next up we have a complaint with some player names such as Captain Seabass, and other similar names, aren't allowed because we have a pretty strict word sensor. Luckily with the new server name generator, which we were forced to put in place thanks to some people taking advantage of our faith in our community, naming your character something less appropriate isn't really that big of a deal anymore. So we've decided to remove some of the more mellow terms so the players weren't as restricted in their names. For obvious reasons, I won't be showing how I fixed this because it involves staring at some pretty uh, not nice words. So next up, we have some complaints that ghosts can fly through some of the doors on the island that they're not supposed to be going through. So I added a little boolean on our doors that we can check to prevent ghosts from entering. We really like the idea that when a player died, they could explore the area a bit before returning to life, giving death almost a purpose so players could explore around the next bend to see if defeating that monster guarding a cave or something was actually worth trying to defeat or not. Being able to fly through some doors makes this ability even more interesting, especially since we plan on incorporating the mechanic into future quests. Unfortunately, after about 15 minutes of trying to figure out how to stop the ghost from flying through the door at runtime, I finally gave up and just replaced the doors in question with a static mesh, fixing the problem temporarily. Looks like that issue gets to be a Moz issue. Next, I decided to investigate why our quest rewards display none in the quality section if they reward a weapon. This turned out to be a pretty easy fix once I found out where the issue was. Turns out our quests are displaying as none quality instead of standard, while the tooltip would normally hide the none prefix of an item that doesn't have a quality. In this case, it's displaying it anyway. So I just added a little select on a boolean to switch it to standard quality if it's none. It's kind of a hacky fix, but I know that these item rewards should never display none because quest rewards will always be standard quality. So it's fine for now, a more permanent fix requires a deeper dive into the quest reward setup, and that's more of a Moz thing. Moving on. After the last update, players have been mentioning the fall damage has been disabled. No idea how this happened, so I spent some time checking it to see if I can fix it. Moz was playing around with the gliders last patch, so I thought maybe he may have unhooked something, and uh, well, yep, that was easy. Okay, next. So we also have some reports that Huck here is stealing people's slingshots randomly. Hmm. Alright. Uh, so I dug through his dialogue to find out why, and turns out uh, he isn't. Someone falsely accused poor Huck here. I'm guessing they didn't bother to read the dialogue and just spam through it and suddenly lost their slingshot. Whoops. Moving on. Next up, Yenna seems to have forgotten who you are sometimes after you've talked for once. This should be relatively easy to fix, and yep. Turns out she wasn't set up with an NPC ID, meaning there's no way for the game to check to see if she knows you or not. I'm surprised that wasn't fixed sooner. 
And here's a bug where Doug is not progressing a quest. Pretty sure this has something to do with him trying to spawn some crabs on the beach for you, if there aren't any. When that happens, he doesn't actually progress the quest. Super easy fix. Yep, all we had to do was duplicate his quest start event to the other dialogue node as well. Done. Next up, when we look at another player in multiplayer, we're getting an empty information box in the bottom right. Let's see if we can add some sort of information here with a few noodles and some duct tape. The next report is a complaint that the leaves in their pirate punch dance around way too much. Let's get that one fixed up. Yeah, so it looks like we're using an old material here that has a wind effect on it. Eventually we'll probably phase that out entirely, but for now we'll just swap it out with a different material. Alright, and finally the last one is a bug report about Roxy, a pirate in the tiny tavern who really likes honey in her drinks. She offers you a quest to get her some, but the player has no choice other than deny her request if they don't already have the honey, rather than tell her they'll get her some. Let's give them another option. Boom, that's it. Bugs fixed, we did it. Okay, well, some of them. Most of them. Now we have to wait to make sure they're all working and confirmed by testers, and then they can go into the next patch. Oh, and after Moz and Wendy and Joe fix their bugs, of course. So what else is new with the game? Well, the team and I have decided to slow down our monthly content updates so we can focus entirely on the new zone. We did promise to push out another big bug fix patch before we go dark, so that's why I decided to work on some of that this week. Oh yeah, and I have a pretty cool announcement to make. I've been chatting with a representative from a company who's making a really interesting new energy drink called Root. They sent me a sample and asked if I wanted to partner with them to help tell people about their new drink. After trying it out and learning more about what Root was, I've decided that I'm super excited about the opportunity. The best part is that instead of just doing a sponsored video or something, they want to host a game jam. And I'm all for taking a weekend off from Swords of Magic. So this Saturday and Sunday, March 20th and 21st, I'll be streaming it live on my Twitch channel. The best part is that the jam has a big focus on community participation. So chat can submit ideas, music, sound effects, art, and just whatever else we may need, and we'll make a game together in just two days. If this sounds like something you want to be involved in, then please stop by for one of the streams. I'll post more about the times in my Discord server and let everyone know when I go live there. It's gonna be a blast. Oh, and did I mention that Root is awesome? They're offering up a bunch of cool prizes during the event, including a $250 Steam gift card. I'll put more information about them below. Alright, I hope to see you guys this weekend. Shout out to our Patreon supporters who keep the lights on between the game updates, and thanks for watching.